Hey everyone, Justin here. Thanks for watching. This video is about visual task boards. That's right, VTBs in ServiceNow, otherwise known in the rest of the world as Kanbans. It is a way for us in ServiceNow to visualize our tasks that are assigned to us, to our team, or stuff that we just want to manage and have access to. So let's quit talking. Let's actually get to it. I'm going to show you how to get there. So let's hop over to visual task boards and we're going to talk through a couple of things. Um, I'm going to actually build one from scratch and here's why. I use visual task boards every day in my job and I typically demo visual task boards using a data driven da uh, board like you're seeing here. And these are task boards where the tasks automatically show up as they get created in the system, right? So it might be an incident task or a catalog task or a change task, stuff like that. Those are great. Great to demo too because it changes the state as you're moving things around. What I use in real life are actual freeform boards, right? So this is something that I use every day. This means I can control what comes onto that board, what goes off of that board, and I can manage my personal states of where this is in my backlog and what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create this freeform board. You'll notice it comes by default with a couple of lanes here to do, doing, and done. This is great, but not exactly what I do. So let's go ahead and get my lanes added. I used to keep a lane for research. I keep a lane for scheduled and I keep a lane for uh, waiting. And I'll talk through what exactly this means in Justin's world. So essentially my flow goes in this direction, right? So I do work and I wanna progress it towards this direction, left to right on how I'm working through things. So done needs to be very last, right? That's gonna be the last step. I know if it's all the way over on the right, I don't gotta worry about it anymore. If it's doing, that's usually needs to be front and center. I'm actually working on it and I want that to be, come on, um, I want that to be right in front of me so I know that um, it needs to be worked on. So there we go, we got that. So this is actually the true order of how I work. I have to do, I have stuff that I want to research. I have things that are scheduled. Maybe these are meetings or I've got a one-on-one -on -one with somebody that I know I'm just, there's nothing I need to do. It's gonna be happening when I get that scheduled. Um, there's the work I'm actually doing. This one I try to keep to a certain amount, maybe two or three things, otherwise I get overwhelmed. I'm waiting, I'm waiting on someone, I'm waiting on a meeting, I'm waiting for something to get scheduled so I can move it into the scheduled folder or scheduled lane over here. So this is kind of helps me manage where things are. And then my favorite column, probably everybody's favorite column, um, unless you just delete the card, is done, right? So it's done. One thing that I do a lot of is there's things I need to research. So maybe I want to do a VTB demo and I want to go research um, the documentation. So I'll make myself a note, it's not connected to anything. And now I'm tracking this PTSK or this private task that's just for me, just for Justin and what I want to see. So I like the fact that I can add personal or private tasks. If I were to share this board with somebody else, it wouldn't be that private. Other people would be able to see them, but by default, unless they're on this board, they shouldn't be able to see a private task in the system. Now, how do I get the rest of my work on there, right? So I look at things like catalog tasks. I track incidents when I open them for myself or somebody else. Um, request that it might be, maybe I'm working in a demo environment, stuff like that. So this is what I do. I'm gonna hop over to the root task list in ServiceNow. If you're not familiar with ServiceNow, everything's based off of, or most tasks are based off or derived from the root task table. And uh, for the demo purposes, if you look down at the bottom, I've got about 28,000 records. If I try to move through in this demo and show you what I wanna show you with that, I need to get that number down, otherwise it's gonna be really slow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter by the task type. And I'm gonna say, is my task an incident? Then I wanna see it in this list. Or is it a catalog task? This is a very common one we use all the time. Or is it a change, change requests? I use those all the time. And let's pick up one more, a project task. Maybe I wanna see project tasks on here. Um, these are all things that might get assigned to me and I might have to do. And then I'll say, and um, the state is, let's just keep this simple. Uh, we'll do is one of, and we'll do pending, open, work in progress. And I wanna see, it should be like a new, yeah, new. This should get my list down pretty far. I'll go ahead and run that filter. And now I've got a list of, oh good, I've got 1,591 tasks to show you and demonstrate with here. So that's a lot easier to work with. If I wanted to create a favorite, I could do that there. If I wanted to 
favorite up here, I could do that there and get back to this list whenever I want to. So let's go ahead and favorite that. And that way, if we have to come back to it. Second thing I'm going to do, I added this on before the demo, is now I'm going to group by that task type just for our demo purposes here. So let's group by task type. Now I'll see those 1591 tasks all grouped in their little categories. And I can show you what's cool about this. So if I go into incident, uh, we'll just click into it. We'll show what the incident is here. I've got a couple of them. And let's just say I'm trying to grab some work for me to work on, or maybe I went and filtered on the assigned to over here and said, show me everything where Justin's assigned. Two different ways I could do that. But I could go ahead and do that. And now I can take an action on that and look at what this action is. It went away as soon as I drew my arrow, but I'll show you again, add to visual task board. So I'm gonna put these on my visual task board that we created at 7.05 p.m. Done, those are on my visual task board. I'll go back to my favorite now. So there's my tasks. And now I have them all grouped. Let's get rid of the change filter there. Uh, looks like it didn't keep my, um, my group by there. So I'm gonna go back here. Now I'm looking at my incidents. There we go. So let's go grab a change request and make sure that there's a couple new ones. I'll put these on my visual task board. Let me just click in there. I'm going to show you a third way, or second way actually, to get these onto your task board um, besides doing it from the list view here. But I just want to get some content on there so we can see what this looks like on my task board. So I'll get that in there. We'll go back. And I think the last one I had was catalog tasks. So one of the last one, project tasks, catalog tasks. So let's pull up a catalog task. And this one, I'm actually going to open it. So I'm viewing the catalog task itself. Um, I can see that you know this isn't assigned to anybody, it's missing or whatever. So I could do all that, I could add that. And I'm just gonna go real quick, I'm gonna right click the header and say add to visual task board. Don't forget I could use the hamburger icon too over here to add to visual task board, but this is so much easier on my wrist to just go straight up, add that to my task board, and then I can use these arrows in the upper right to move through that list view that I looked at earlier, and let's just go through and find another catalog task um, to add to my visual task board. So there it is, it's on my visual task board. Now to get back to my visual task board, because I didn't make a favorite, I'm gonna have to go this way and go find it again. There's my new board. Um, let's give it a name. We'll just call this demo board for YouTube. And so now it has a name. And then if you know task boards at all, you can see there's some information panel you can open up. One of these things in the information panel is our favorite icon. So I can go ahead and add a favorite or new in San Diego, I can use this little favorite icon up here um, that's available on most pages that you navigate to. And now that's gonna show up in my favorites. So I've got the VTB demo board for YouTube and I got my task list that I can go back to. Second thing I'm gonna do is notice on the left-hand side here, my tasks are pretty sparse. There's not much in there. So I wanna add some more information. So let's go ahead and change the settings for this. We'll turn off compact cards. We'll show, we'll keep the card info on there. Gives a little more context. Um, I'll show if there's any attachments and I wanna show if there's any SLAs. So notice I've got a little bit look at different feel. I can see the actual SLA on the visual task board itself. So I know where I am on that. So these are due in October, November, lucky me, or they're overdue, um, probably overdue. And now I'm managing tasks and I'm gonna triage this to my board. So these are all got their own states associated with them. Um, but I'm gonna say, hey, this one, I'm actually waiting on somebody. This one is scheduled. This one I'm actually working on today for this Java server change. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna do the other Java server change. The Unix update, I gotta do some research before that. And then um, this one in particular is scheduled. And then these two I still need to work on. Look at this, everyone. Now I have a visual of how my work is moving through Justin's system of statuses, not necessarily the IT manager, the incident manager, the change manager, the problem manager, the request manager. It's how I'm managing my work when I come in and sit down in the morning and what I need to get done. If I wanna go get some help and assign somebody to it, notice I've got access to something you don't see in many other places. I can put a primary or additional assignee on this actual task. If I wanna open this up, I can start using checklists on my task, my personal ones. I could do this elsewhere if someone's enabled the checklist. But let's go ahead and put this example checklist and check off a couple so you can see what that looks like. Now I've got a progress indicator indicating that I'm on two of three of the checklist items for that particular task. Last thing I can do that's also helpful is I can add these labels. So maybe I have, I know this is a request and I know this is a feature I wanna work on. I know this is high priority. Um, and let's say this other one over here is this VTB demo documentation is high priority. Watch up above. I'm gonna go up and instead of dragging these 
on the form, I'm going to click on it and filter my visual task board to show me high priority items. Maybe uh, I don't want to see high priority items. Maybe I want to see stuff that has the word um, Java in it. So I can just search for the word Java. Now I'm seeing just the things that have the word Java in it. So lots of utility, lots of power there around using a visual task board and not necessarily a data driven board, but a free form board where I'm in control, what goes on my board, what gets moved to the done folder, very important to me to get my work done and have a nice stacked full done lane of things I no longer want to see anymore. And hopefully on Friday when I leave for the afternoon, that is what my done or my doing lane looks like. And I feel good. I know what's coming at me over there in the to do lane that I have to work on and what might be scheduled. Uh, for me to actually work on. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.